1952, David Bohm published a paper in Physics Journal called Hidden Quantum Mechanics in Terms of Hidden Variables, Part 1 and Part 2. And it is exactly what it says it is. It's an account of quantum mechanical phenomena that does postulate additional variables. He called them hidden, but anyway, additional variables. And Bell read that, and he read it carefully, and he said, yeah, this works. I mean, what, what Bohm has written here does, in fact, reproduce all of those predictions. It would predict that you would get these spots um, with this distribution. And it's done in terms of these additional variables. Hey, what's going on, right? My professor told me that von Neumann had proven that you can't do this. And I have in front of me a flat counterexample. Here it is done. And at that point, he could get von Neumann and he gets the book, he looks at it, and he immediately spots an assumption. It's not that von Neumann made a mathematical error, but he makes an assumption in his proof. And he said, Bell later says, the assumption was foolish. It was foolish is the word he used. Not a reasonable physical assumption. There's another interesting story, which is that somebody goes, I think in the 40s, I'm not sure, to Einstein when he's in Princeton. And Einstein's been thinking also in terms of these additional variables all this time. And the, the interviewer, I can't remember who it was, says, yeah, but what about von Neumann? And tells a story that, that, that Einstein goes to his bookshelf, pulls von Neumann's book off the shelf, opens it to a page, points to something and says, there's no reason to believe this. And it's the same thing that Bell, as soon as you're thinking this way, as soon as, you know, you, you, you cast a critical eye on what von Neumann did, it's not hard to see that there's an assumption which has no real justification. And many people saw that. But it was suppressed. It was much easier to tell your students. Um, von Neumann settled this. Stop think, trying to think this way. What was the assumption? I'm sorry. That, so the, the, the technical assumption, the mathematical assumption, I'll try to describe it. In quantum theory, as I say, they talk about observables. Um, that's the thing Bell didn't like. He said, well, talk about beables, talk about what there is, not what you can observe. But these observables in quantum theory are associated mathematically with things called Hermitian operators. So these are just well-defined pieces of mathematics. So you say, position, that's an observable. What's the operator? Here it is. Momentum, that's an observable. What's the operator? Here it is. These operators have mathematical relations between them. So one can be the sum or the difference of others. You know, they're well-defined mathematical relations between the uh, operators. Von Neumann's assumption was that if you postulated these additional variables that were accounting for the results of, say, a position experiment or a momentum experiment, right? why did, the, why did the, the spot form exactly here? So I postulate some actual object that was, was there. He assumed in his proof that, that the, these additional variables, their values would have to be mathematically related to each other in exactly the same way as these, these operators are mathematically related to each other. And there's no reason to assume that. I mean, Bohm didn't assume it. And Bell, on thinking about it, said, why would you think that? Why, why would you put that constraint on an additional variables theory, a hidden variables theory? It's not a reason, physically, it's not a reasonable constraint. And Bell even gives a little short argument that says, it's immediately obvious if you put that constraint on, of course it can't be done. You don't even have to go through much thought just to explain things about uh, angular momentum. Um, so he said, yeah, that's, that's, that, that, that's foolish. Um, yes, I understand I can't build a theory with that particular mathematical constraint on it, but but I see no reason to put that constraint on it. And if you take that off, you can do it. And here, Bohm has done it. And long before Bohm really, Louis de Broglie did it, I mean, back in the 20s. So it's not even very hard to find a theory that works that way. 
but people convinced themselves because they didn't, again, I, it, the only explanation for this in my mind was that they were very, a bunch of physicists were very, very psychologically motivated for there not to be such a theory. They didn't want there to be such a theory. And if, and von Neumann had given them a kind of uh, straw to grab onto and say, look, it can't be done. You know, you're just wasting your time. Get with the program, right? Yeah.